far side. Give us a cup from a Villa fan. And this team is certainly capable, but there's a hurdle to be uh, cleared here. And it's not an easy one. Well, the first thing to know is that it looks like Cole Palmer's playing up top. Nicholas Jackson out on the left-hand side. and thought it might be the other way round. And they tried to press Chelsea. The first action. And Villa played round it. A certain amount of ease. There's Douglas Luiz who came closest to getting a goal in the first game. It was uh, quite rightly disallowed by VAR, the handball. And again, setting off here. And it's got a better gusto. And is it going to fall for Tielemans? Not quite. Cash. Villa want a free kick. The referee Tom Bramall says, play on, nothing wrong. And they're certainly prepared to play on with Nicholas Jackson here. Oh, his teammates were arriving in the middle, but he seemed only to have eyes for goal. He was a bit slow to decide what to do there, wasn't he, Nicholas Jackson? He had a lot of space to run into and then turned back and gave Matty Cash the opportunity to get back and defend against him. Really open start to the game. We've seen John McGinn go down the left-hand side. And Jackson exploiting Aston Villa's high line, getting in behind Matty Cash. Hopefully there's plenty more of that to come tonight. Well, they were four up in 20 minutes at Sheffield United. That's the a Premier League record for an away team. And Yuri Tielemans, who was interviewed before the game, said... What were you looking for tonight and, and to take from that game? He said the early goal. Oh, uh, it was off and running. And it's Bailey and McGinn. There was Luis, now Maddy Cash, an adventurous right back. There might be an offside here, there might not be. It didn't lead to a goal, so the flag has stayed down. And the way that Aston Villa play, the two wide players do narrow off. Bailey and McGinn, they come quite central, make it a box midfield at times, so there is space for the fullbacks to get forward, and Matty Cash loves to do that. And Alex Moreno does as well. He, he was one of the scorers at the weekend. And it's not unheard of for this Villa lineup for the two uh, fullbacks to combine. You see it again, can't you? John McGinn central, and there's the space for Moreno to run into. Ten previous FA Cup meetings. Villa won the first five. So, uh, look at that uh, incident. Would it have been offside? No, no. Because <laughs> Watkins didn't interfere, did he? So Villa won the first five of ten FA Cup meetings between these two clubs. The six were drawn. Chelsea won the next three, including a final in uh, 2000 and a semi-final in 2010. And then came the draw 12 days ago at Stamford Bridge. There was a bit of talk, wasn't it, about Maurizio Pochettino, Pochettino potentially changing his formation, maybe going to a back three that started the season that way. First three or four Premier League games, and it's been a back four ever since. He's decided to stick with the back four tonight. Here's Enzo Fernandez. And Conor Gallagher survived the uh, transfer window not where I think he wanted to go but there's a lot of talk for the financial reasons that we're hearing a lot of talk about at the moment that Chelsea might have to cash in on his talent fans would have been up in arms I think there he is on the scene there after the challenge by Jackson yeah, it does seem strange doesn't it where sort of the recruitment has been to bring in a lot of really good young players you can understand that, but sacrificing some of your own homegrown players well, in home doing so. players cost nothing. Yeah. <laughs> and they, all the others, the ones brought in, cost uh, zillions. <laughs> and that is something that football's going to have to come to terms with, I think, under this present financial setup. It's certainly the quietest winter transfer window, I think, since transfer windows were brought in.
for Bailey to chase. He's uh, in and out of the side in the uh, early months of Unai Emery. And the manager sat him down and said, I want more from you, you've got more to give. Let's work it out. So far, so good. Here's uh, Madueke. A little stab at it by Palmer. It didn't go to Gallagher and it didn't go in the net. Mm, clearly, Chelsea have looked at this and thought pace is the way to go. Madueke on the right, Jackson on the left, particularly with the way that Aston Villa play. And they can potentially exploit that Aston Villa defensive line. He's been terrific this season, Cole Palmer. And that's another example of what we've just been talking about. Manchester City, who would have happily kept him. But, uh, somebody who costs nothing and use that as uh, a way of dealing with the pros and cons of profit and sustainability. Chua. Fernandez. Whether he had a chance to get the better of his World Cup winning fellow countrymen and the goal that Chelsea are attacking. Barry Shield has made one or two mistakes recently, gave away a penalty in the defeat at Anfield. They've given away penalties in their last two games. There's, uh, Gusto against Wolves on Sunday. Bailey tracking back. Fernandez has begun very much on the front foot, hasn't he? Yeah, he has. A... He's a decent player, and they've got good individual players, Chelsea. They've struggled for consistency this season, but on any given day, they're capable of beating anyone. So, Tazassi's scored a couple of goals, scored the first goal under the Pochettino regime on the opening weekend of the season against Liverpool at Stamford Bridge. Chilwell with the supply line. The best header. Oof. Fernandez and Badia Shield both going for the same ball. Had that not been the case, one of them might have scored. And the flag did go up, so it would have been offside anyway. Badia Shield headed it on to Fernandez. A bit like um, we saw the Everton Spurs game that Calvert Lewin headed it on to Jack Harrison, and it did end up in the net. So considerable confusion for those who had to identify the goal scorer, which, uh, of which I wasn't one happily. <laughs> Fourth official is Anthony Taylor, a familiar figure of the uh, senior referees in English football and European football. Here's Cash. Matthew Cash got that winner in round three at Middlesbrough. The Middlesbrough beaten team included uh, the New signing, Morgan Rogers, who's obviously cup tied because of that. And he made his debut at the weekend. A great recovery from Gusto. Moreno looked like he was in. Clever dummy from John McGinn. Free kick for Chelsea. Missing Ezri Konza, of course, tonight. Aston Villa, that's a big loss. Started all of the Premier League games this season, either at centre back or at right back. Versatile. Yeah, all of them, including Emery's games last season as well. So he's um, certainly won the league games. Kick off again at the weekend. The maybe a more noted absence, particularly when Aston Villa are playing Manchester United. Turn of Pau Torres, I guess, if he's fit enough to be on the bench tonight, he might be fit enough to be in contention for a place in the starting 11 at the weekend. Adia Shield.
who have lost only two of their last 17 games in all competitions. They are very much uh, in the image of their very popular head coach. Here's Jackson, though, coming to unhinge Villa here. He gets it across. AK. Gallagher plants it in. First goal in the tie, and it's Chelsea's. Numbers in the box. And the 6,000 visiting fans are delighted with Chelsea's start here. Just past the 10 minute mark. It's an excellent finish as well from Conor Gallagher. It's been a promising start from the visitors. They've pressed well. They win the ball back inside Aston Villa's half, and then can they break? Gallagher sets Jackson away, but doesn't stop and Admari's pass. He gets himself into the box where it matters. And first time he plants it past Emi Martinez. A really coolly taken effort from Conor Gallagher. The goalkeeper has got no chance. As I say, it's been a really encouraging start from Chelsea, and they've got their reward. First time and first goal of the season, which is extraordinary for a player of his attacking instincts from midfield. Good start for Pochettino's team. Not just the goal, but the way they're playing. They have one on their last two league visits here, Chelsea. Early days in this fourth round replay. And here's Tielemans. Bailey! And again. Bailey and again. Here's the goalwards finally, but it was straight at the Chelsea keeper. Petrovic kept it out well. Almost an instant response, wasn't it, from Aston Villa. Badishu stands on the ball, makes a bit of a mistake. A hashed clearance. Falls back to Bailey, second attempt. And, uh, Petrovic worked again by Watkins from the angle. And it's an open start to the game, and that's continued. It's going to be even more so now that Chelsea have got themselves ahead. Mr. Villa quick to respond. And a couple of efforts on the Chelsea goal. Again to take the corner. It's a rehearsed one, but not executed properly. And the counter attack here, streaming forward. Those in blue. Here's Gusto, the right back, not with the right delivery. He never felt comfortable, did they? On the counter, got stuck under Nicholas Jackson's feet, and then. Gusto was always stretching to try and get his cross in. But a brilliant initial transition from Chelsea. Reading the set piece from John McGinn. And this is the perfect response from the Chelsea players. Under a lot of pressure coming into this game. Heavy criticism the last couple of matches. Yes, it was suggested some of that came from the manager himself. But he was quick yesterday at the press conference to point out that he'd been misquoted. And that he had had this conversation with the players where he said, look, I'm this kind of guy, I'm passionate about my football, I trust you, we'll do this together. And so far tonight, those words seem to have uh, hit the sweet spot. But well, It's always a combined effort, isn't it? You know, the manager tends to be the one that pays with his job, but players need to take responsibility as well. So, he certainly started this game very well. by Newcastle here in the last game on this ground which was played after the first uh, FA Cup tie between the two and Newcastle thoroughly deserved to win that 3-1 best part of a year since Aston Villa had suffered a defeat at home Before that, I think they've won all but one, haven't they, in the Premier League here at Villa Park? Yeah, it was uh, an irresistible run.
Tulsa, of course, fighting for the pride of the capital. I have to go back to 1902, the last time there were no London clubs in the fifth round or the equivalent of it. And back in those times, and Chelsea are the last representative from uh, what used to be known as the smoke. And it would be smoke free, the FA Cup, if Chelsea were to lose tonight, but they've. Uh, Made uh, a good impression so far. I suggest that London fans might have somebody to follow through. And of course, the uh, last time they got to the League Cup final, they also got to the FA Cup final as well, but lost both the same opponents, Liverpool, tightest of matches. Fernandez squeezing it past. Palmer just held his position to stay onside. Tielemans gets it away, but not very far. Gusto. Uh, Cole Palmer. A couple of pirouettes. And Villa gave the ball away again in midfield. But a couple of loose passes, a couple of square balls that have been cut out. Free kick. You can hear the Chelsea fans. 6,300. They made their way to Villa Park. Chilwell. Room for Jackson. Ball on this left-hand side position. Adueke found it just an awkward height. Well, he's found a lot of space down this left-hand side, Nicholas Jackson. Matty Cash pushing in on, on Ben Chilwell, leaving that space in behind for Jackson to run into, and he's done that well. Let's see how advanced Gallagher is, and it's often been the case under Pochettino. The fact that he hadn't scored until tonight is one of the strangest facts about uh, Chelsea's problems this season. There's Chilwell, does the job very neatly. Not too many players left from the three consecutive FA Cup final defeats. They've taken their losers' medals and moved on. So, uh, Mason Mount, who was often the public face of that particular suffering. And a foul on the camera. And Chelsea again with numbers. Madueke. Likes to get it onto his left foot, but can do a lot better than that. Well, again, it comes from Villa giving the ball away. I think the opening Chelsea goal came from Camera giving the ball away. And he's just done the same again on halfway. Look at Chelsea in transition, getting bodies forward. Not the best end product, but another opportunity on the break for them. Well, every attack looks threatening, doesn't it? Villa are leaving themselves a little bit light at the back, the way they're playing. Caicedo. Okay, Largely because of his huge transfer fee from Brighton, has been on the receiving end of quite a lot of the criticism. That's probably more accurately generally aimed at a team rather than an individual. And they, they know they haven't pulled up the trees that they're expected to. But it could be it's a policy of buying young players and turning them into a team doesn't happen very often. It could be a stroke of genius, of course, in a couple of years' time. We'll see. Cleared by Bailey. Casado. Gallagher. Now Chilwell. Much oh, yeah. like the first game, Chelsea were dominant in the first half of the match. Aston Villa came back strongly in the second. This has been a really good start from the visitors. 
considering the last couple of results. They're playing with a real confidence. Madueke. To back off Bustos cross, and it's knocked in for number two, and Jackson in the middle. Great moment for him. Missed a good header at the weekend. Gusto put it on a plate for him. And it's not undeserved. Aston Villa nil, Chelsea two. Well, you said it moments ago. Every time Chelsea go forward, they look like scoring. They look like opening Aston Villa up. Space again for the delivery into the box. Look how high their fullbacks are getting. Gusto delivers, Chilwell's making his way into the box and because of Chilwell's run, Matty Cash actually leaves Nicholas Jackson because he's aware of Chilwell's presence. And by doing so, Jackson's free, six yards out. And he makes no mistake, I mean, it's a difficult one, that, because you're not quite sure if the defender's going to touch it or not. He doesn't, Jackson keeps his eyes on it and he finds the bottom corner. This is a brilliant start from Chelsea. That's a really controlled header. And also, you mentioned uh, Konsa, the effect of his absence, and I think we're seeing it already. And the, the fulcrum at the back, really. Everybody else has come and had a, a stint at it. Pau Torres was probably the preferred partner. Diego Carlos has played more football this season. He missed most of last season through injury. Longley's had a run now of eight or nine games, but wasn't close before that. Blue is the colour. Well, even the most optimistic Chelsea fan wouldn't have expected it. After the 20-minute mark, that there'd be two goals to the good. Yeah, it was a pinch me moment as they're going on there. It's a long time since. Uh, they did beat Chelsea in the FA Cup, and there could be more trouble here. Gusto again looking for, well, three or four who are arriving. Yeah. Nice to Shocked, I would say. Another square pass given away there by John McGinn. Cole Palmer was the intended target for that, well, for the cutback and the pass through. Aston Villa in midfield have really struggled, playing too many square but balls that Chelsea are reading and nicking. We were saying both managers have gone strong with their selection. It's just that little bit. You know, as strong as your weakest link, and it looks as though Aston Villa have a weak link at the back. They've been cut apart with relative ease and plenty of quality from Chelsea. We think to put it down to an absentee. Here's Watkins. I feel it's vital for Villa to get the next goal and they're looking to get it here with Douglas Lewis trying to guide it down to McGinn. Longley. Thielemann is back to Diego Carlos. Now Cash. Bailey. He's kept it through to Matty Cash, who was looking to make himself available. Mm, the flag's gone up. He was just offside. How good was that, though, from Leon Bailey outside of his boot, flicking it into the path of Matty Cash? We do have VAR, I should remind you all of that, being a Premier League venue. A lot of the uh, pictures and fittings are in. Hi, Emery. I'm going to listen to a fair bit from Paco Aesteran, his uh, assistant. As to, uh, what needs to be done. Telemans might do something here. Covering by Chilwell. Goals from Gallagher and Jackson. 25 minutes gone at Villa Park. In terms of chance taking, very different to the first game. The 
of frustration. Charlie Watkins chasing hard. Cole Palmer coming deep, getting on the ball. You shouldn't uh, forget that Villa won one 0 at Chelsea in the league earlier in the season. So Chelsea had been struggling to find a way through Aston Villa, and maybe that's what's causing the surprise to the Chelsea fans. They've done it so freely, so uh, with apparent ease. Of course, it's not as simple as that, but they, uh, they seem to have caught Emery's team out with their willingness to get people forward and take risks, take people on, as Jackson's doing here. They just ran out of room this time. Well, if they're going to play this way, Aston Villa, Diego Carlos has got to get across quicker to Nicholas Jackson because he's getting in down this left-hand side every single time. And Chelsea have had a tough season. There hasn't been too many bumps in the Aston Villa road, but experiencing one here. Size by the youth who scores Jackson just 22. Number 23, Gallagher is 23. And again, camera has not had a good start to the game at all. No, it keeps giving it away. It's another square pass in midfield, and, and Chelsea got numbers in there. The way they've set the team up with Caicedo, Fernandez, and Conor Gallagher. There's lots of bodies. Okay. Good stuff. He's actually sent off in that uh, home defeat in the league to Villa. And he's got a bit of a debt to repay, and he's planted a beautiful cross for the second goal. There is a temptation, I guess, in this situation for Chelsea. I think well, we've got. Two put away now. They can slow the tempo down a little bit, but I'm not sure that would be the wisest thing. They could really put it to bed before half time if they keep playing the way they did for the first 20 minutes. This is their preferred build up, isn't it? With camera coming to this right hand side, making it a back three, he's giving it away again. Gallagher, Chilwell, drive it hard and low towards Palmer. Long leg. That's not really a completed pass. Confidence flowing through the veins of the Chelsea players who have looked devoid of it, nervous, not sure of whether they'll be in the team the next week or not. A bit of a consistency in selection. Changes perhaps just a reference to the fact they played on Sunday and Villa played on Saturday. Maduweke. Given his head. Palmer. Corner for Chelsea. We'll be delighted with what he's seen this opening half an hour. His team have been excellent. Palmer's always a threat. His movement's really good as well, isn't it? The way he just drifts into space. Doesn't stay as a centre forward against it. And he's easily marked against the two centre backs. He's always drifting, looking to get involved in the game, looking to influence the game. Martinez beaten twice. And needing full focus. Dealing with this corner, it's clipped in to where Longley gets half a header to it. Bailey. Not much help around and then challenged by Gallagher. He did get the ball. There's no indication from either referee or assistant on that far side. He would have had a good view of it. It was a lunging challenge from Gallagher, and that's where the frustrations have come with the Aston Villa fans. See, so he lunges in, but it's the trailing leg that catches 
Leon Bailey. Yeah, often that's penalised these days, isn't it? But not this time. Viewers will say it's never a foul. This is the way Tom Bramwell, is one of the younger Premier League referees, work his way up the ladder in the uh, prime FA Cup. Uh, it's been beamed around the world here. Yeah, no, I played 200 years ago, it wasn't a foul. <laughs> Jill, well, it's worth a try. Just drags his shot. It did open up for him. Never ever troubling Emmy Martinez. Uh, the last beat Chelsea in the FA Cup back in 1960, and it was a fourth round tie. Beat them tonight, they're going to have to do it the very hard way and the very spectacular way. I said it to the semi finals with Brighton last season. Gallagher. Okay, it's a nicely weighted pass. We'll get down the sides at will, Chelsea. And Luke and Nicholas Jackson have found so much space in the wide areas. And the fullbacks as well. But, uh, just a little bit of the tempo has gone out of it when Chelsea do get the turnovers. Making sure perhaps that everyone has a mind on defending a two goal lead which has been earned. Fine flowing football. Yeah, I think that that's probably the thing that's pleased Maurizio Pochettino the most the intensity and tempo that his team have played at. Whereas for Unai Emery, it's been the opposite. And he'd be unhappy with the giveaways, particularly in midfield. Just for the record, Aston Villa have scored in their last 38 games here. So, Chelsea would be taking nothing for granted anyway, but that stat rather enforces the belief that great start here, and it has been that, doesn't necessarily equal a great result. We've got Peter Banks in the VAR situation. Get information into that ear through the earpiece. When required, camera going in. And okay, and the battle of the number 11s. Watkins doesn't give it up. Manu okay, still going. Well, that sums up really what we've seen so far. Villa wilting, Chelsea profiting. Martinez parries away from Palmer. It's a hunger and a desire that we haven't seen too often from Chelsea. Maybe just the cup takes a bit of the pressure off. They straightforward passage in the third round against Championship side Preston North End 4 0. They played well enough in the first game against Villa. Could have brought them a win on another day. Uh, they really judged as a potential top four team for years and years and years now that they're in the lower half of the table. What about this from a run from Mad Wake? Second favourite, and yet he just shrugs Douglas Louise off and he's away. And Cole Palmer's effort on that right hand side again, cutting in on his left, trying to open the goal up. Yeah, a bit of curl from Cole. Ten minutes to go to half time. In by Chilwell. Billy Shield, a big lad going for it. Complete miss kick by Caicedo. And now a turnover that Villa might be able to use their advantage, but don't get very far thanks to Gallagher's challenge. 
He does that so well. Hustle and bustle, the energy. Well, it's got him from being a bit part player at Chelsea, loaned out hither and thither into the England squad. And at times, captain of Chelsea. You know, you mentioned it, it's his first goal tonight, and that's something that he will be judged on as well. He had a great loan spell at Crystal Palace where he scored plenty. Well, Chelsea fans still in very good voice. Inwardly after the season they've been watching, particularly in away matches. Thinking, and all this last, as you said at the start, that lost six of their last seven away games. You know, Emery would have factored that in. Pochettino uh, knows all about uh, Aston Villa's home records, so you know, it's, it's gone against the grain of statistics. But that's uh, why football is so wonderful. And the FA Cup, in particular, and its capacity to not follow a logical pattern. Fernandez and Tielemans having a rare old tussle here. Yeah, who got the last touch? That's the question. <laughs> I don't think that provided the answer. We know what he thinks. But the corner has been given. And if Villa were to get a foothold back in the game from this, there'd be some Chelsea complaints, that's for sure. In towards Watkins. Low for a and he's sort of glancing touch. And Gusto moving up to his name. And there's a little bit of uh, extra tension coming into it at the moment. It's another positive run though, getting Chelsea up the pitch, just relieving that pressure that Aston Villa were hoping to build. Another of the youngsters from Lyon. Yes, he made uh, well, the back end of last year, made his debut for France. And, uh, looking for Diego Carlos. Confirmed. This is the stage where the referee might feel he's got to do that, not just for the incident itself, but just to keep a lid on a, a saucepan of football that was just about to boil over. Not bad as Shields in the team because Thiago Silva's been left out. And that was one of the big news that when the teams were announced. see that the wide areas have been a real outlet for Chelsea, particularly down the right-hand side. I mean, we talked about Jackson down the left and how much space he's had, but they are even more effective. And Bailey had a look up to see what was on in the middle. They could have crossed it earlier, but he didn't see anything that was worthy of the attempt. Sometimes you just got to put it in there and moan at your teammates if they don't get there. Nice header. Chilwell and Jackson, Douglas Luiz, Chilwell again. Home to Leeds United, remember the winners in round five. If you're a FA Cup historian, you remember a certain FA Cup final between Chelsea and Leeds United. But, uh, if it was valued by uh, or rated by those who do that sort of thing for cinema films, it would get X, wouldn't it? Especially the first game. And uh, Chelsea are quite proud of their records in replays in the FA Cup, and that is a big replay, of course, all those years ago, 1970.
Tielemans. By Hedda. By Barry Shiel. And by Gallagher. And, uh, brought down. It's been difficult for Alex Moreno, as it has been for Matty Cash. Well, their natural instinct is to get forward. I mean, they both like to play. But in doing so, they're leaving a lot of space for Chelsea. And they've had to do a lot of running back towards their own goal. Jackson. It's more through the middle now. He did get his goal from a, a proper centre forwards position. Palmer. Has changed. I mean, it was so successful, Jackson on the left, wasn't it? I mean, the goal has encouraged him. The goal scorers want to go where they've got the better chance of scoring. Chelsea haven't been quite as bright down this left hand side since he moved in for them. Bad issue. I say though. Between the two centre backs, it's almost as if half time is now on Chelsea's mind. With three minutes plus to go. And Jackson thought he was fouled, and uh, some of his teammates did as well, but he's been. Very consistent. Always tried to keep the game flowing. Pretty much in the Howard Webb way of trying to get these younger officials. A philosophy that enforces the laws but doesn't lose the spirit of the game we love so much. And the aggression. It's always been a part of the attraction as long as it's properly applied. I've been impressed with the work rate of the two wide players for Chelsea as well. Medweka just tracking back. With McGinn and Leon Bailey narrowing in off those flanks. There is space out wide because the two fullbacks have to deal with those two players, but Medweka and Jackson have tracked back to really good effect. McGinn's had a marvellous season. He's hardly been in the picture. Douglas Lewis, likewise. Cameras probably had his worst. 45 minutes of the campaign, but that's down to Chelsea and their work rate, their application, their thought process, the game plan as they call it. Carefully thought out and energetically applied. Issue. It was a foul, it was just uh, late on parade, Diego Carlos. And he's getting frustrated, trying to nick the ball in front of Nicholas Jackson a couple of times now. Paddy Shield not quite getting the angle right. Chill well appreciated the thought, but not the execution. And in recent years, the FA Cup hasn't been very kind to Aston Villa, or their performances haven't been kind to their ambitions in the FA Cup. Fallen in the third or fourth round, and it looks as though it might be the end of the road this season. They need to get the next goal, perhaps to stop that happening, and uh, see what Chelsea are made of when they do concede, if they do concede. And that just about sums up Aston Villa's night, though, doesn't it? The ball bouncing back off Moreno to go out for a goal kick. He needs half time and he needs it quickly. 
by uh, recent standards. A couple of minutes is quite a short period for Chelsea to negotiate to keep their clean sheet to add to their two impressive goals. John McGinn will be possibly involved in the inquest as to what they can do now to try and undermine what they've seen from Chelsea without actually getting into a more catastrophic position. That's the difficulty. It's a foul throw by Chilwell is got the ball really. A quick throw from Cash for Watkins. Here's McGinn. Well, you're just starting to wonder whether a mistake like that, a foul throw, it's sort of in keeping with what's ha been happening to Chelsea in the majority of games, and it could have led to a Villa goal right on half-time here. Uh, it was a slight touch, wasn't it, from Petrovic, but it was a save you'd expect him to make straight at him. Not McGinn's best effort. And the last passage of play before the half-time whistle. Douglas Lewis with the corner. Moreno, again, not what was required, not by a distance. And they have won that near post flick on a couple of times, though. And it is half time. And arguably the best 45 minutes that the new Chelsea have produced this season. It's come in this FA Cup replay. Conor Gallagher at last getting on the score sheet. I think it might be a bit easier for them to play away from home, away from the demands of Chelsea fans, particularly those who've been there for just the 20 years of silverware. Mind you, there's a, there's a good following here tonight. Mm, very good. Right there. The away fans are the most dedicated ones and probably the most understanding ones. The players tend to think like that sometimes. Think around the occasion in the cup as well, don't you? Can they pick up where they left off? It wasn't Quite full intensity right to half time, but I would argue well, we've got the two goals. We do think we can cope with what Villa have got because Villa tonight haven't looked anything like the Villa. It has been on show here, home game after home game, but not in the last one. Or maybe something from the Newcastle playbook. We'll see if Pochettino, Pochettino took on board here. I just wonder whether at half time Miami would have been tempted to sort of go to a back three, bring Pau Torres on. I don't know how fit he is and whether he's able to and actually be able to get out of him, but with Chelsea being such a threat in those wide areas, just to try to negate that. Yeah, no changes at half time by uh, either camp. And Villa need something early, don't they? Get themselves back into this, get them their belief back. Been speaking prior to the original time about how much the FA Cup means to Munai uh, Emery, who wants to give the fans something that will be in keeping with the history, much of which was in uh, the last century when Aston Villa, of course, one of the forerunners the development of professional football in England. He's asked. How do I get a splendid half? But he wasn't alone. Moreno, the run at left back, Luca Dinia. First choice, not quite fit, but close. Also think that Villa are trying to come on to right from the start. They tried to come on to Chelsea. Chelsea not so uh, impressive when there's a low block to try and find a way through. But what? That's really impressed me with Chelsea tonight, it's been their pressing. The way they've harassed Aston Villa into making mistakes. 
bit of talk at the Chelsea press conference yesterday about Villa having a day, not quite a full day, because they played a 5.30 kickoff. But certainly a bit more recovery time. Was the other Chelsea. Way. Yeah, it was the other way around, though, wasn't it? In the, in the first game, yeah, I think Villa was, had yeah. a longer break and Chelsea yeah. had only played, what, three days before? Yeah. Players like to play, don't they? I mean, it's, uh, if it means one less training session. <laughs> as long, of course, as they're in the team, and that's been the issue for Pochettino. The question is regularly asked, do you know your best team? Well, this uh, 11 are putting a statement out that they might be uh, up for being called that. Yeah, making the case. Yeah. Yeah, it's much easier to pick Aston Villa's strongest 11. Yeah. The little things like that, only 2 0 down. I'm sure the Villa players would be thinking, well, you know, Chelsea have lost these games, they exceeded eight goals, we're at least going to score tonight. Um, however, professional you are, you still have those personal feelings. We should be favourites to win this. They're anything but. And again, need him to pose himself a bit more. That's bending away from Lance Moreno's run. You see the tracking again, though, from Madueke. He tracked Moreno all the way. The work rate has been impressive. the very least young players should be able to give you. And this is not, uh, overstressing the point, they're very youthful. Chelsea, they've had young teams with a lot of success down the years. Great uh, producer of the talent from the London area in the 50s and 60s. Longley, Moreno, again, again. impressive defending, Dizassi, a lovely touch from Palmer, and Weke, it's on the move again, and he gets made a run down the inside right channel, but he couldn't quite reverse it back there, Enzo Fernandez, Ooh, Gallagher just switched off for a moment, I think, but Palmer hadn't, Chelsea could be in again here, Gallagher, Tiat Palmer, good block. It's Moreno, two of the players in there. And they didn't make the most of that, did they, Chelsea? They had a couple of options on the counter. Jackson made a really good run. You mentioned Gallagher. Jackson was on as well. It's the numbers forward when they do get the, into these transitional phases. It's a feature of the modern game. We've just had the Premier League highest number of goals in a round of fixtures last weekend 45 in 10 games. Unfortunately, Villa scored five of those. Unfortunately, Chelsea conceded four of them from their point of view. Is uh, Enzo Fernandez? His uh, pocket was picked, but it was a foul by Yuri Tielemans. Score of a winning goal in an FA Cup final. I just wondered how Chelsea would approach it in this second half. Would they sit and allow Aston Villa to come on to them, and try and see this game through? It doesn't seem to be the case. They started on the front foot. I think if you conceded eight goals in the last two games, you're probably not thinking that's the way to go necessarily. Attack the best form of defence is one of the old cliches. Yeah, it'd be a natural instinct sometimes yeah. is to just try and protect what you've got. Thiago Silva, not needed for protection yet, but maybe later on. And a little bit of a hoo-ha with some publicity about social media being used by Mrs. Thiago Silva. Bell, uh, allegedly pointing a finger at the Chelsea management via the internet. That has been uh, apologies made, I think, from and wife. 
And when he first got into European football with Benfica, he only played half a season there. But he did impress with shots from distance. And so Fernandez, like that, absolutely like that. Brilliant free kick. You don't see so many of them these days, but that flew into the top corner and he's put it past Emmy Martinez of all goalkeepers. Villa nil, Chelsea three. Well, this is a free kick of the highest quality. He was the one that was fouled. He then took the free kick and bends it in the top corner. Brilliant. Chilwell stood over it, but you always felt that it was Enzo Fernandez to take, and it's curling away from Emi Martinez. He's at full stretch. He may even get a slight finger on it, but not enough to keep it out. It's right in the corner. It's drifting away from the goalkeeper. It's perfection from Enzo Fernandez. To beat arguably the best goalkeeper in the world, one of course who knows a bit about the training sessions and dealing with these sort of free kicks from his fellow countrymen. He couldn't deal with that one, it was spot on, as Chelsea have been tonight. Shut off is a bookable offence. They won't mind no. for scoring a goal like that. But if you get two yellow cards before the quarter-finals, you get suspended. It's, uh, only, I think, Thiago Silva. Not involved at the moment. Well, they conceded three here to Newcastle in the last home game. And Chelsea done the same trick. And there wouldn't have been too many forecasts this. When you looked at the respective home and away records of the two sides this season. But Chelsea have been absolutely outstanding. Looks like London will have a representative in the last 16. The only possible reason for optimism from the, I know one or two Chelsea fans I was saying, look at this stat. In away replays after drawing an initial tie at home, nine previous occasions, eight Chelsea victories. Telemans. Camera. They're really struggling to put any passes together to make a meaningful attack, but they might this time, but Camera has only scored one senior goal. About to get there before Petrovic. And this was the free kick, and Villa weren't happy. Was it an air shot? Was there actually a foul from Tielemans? It doesn't matter now. And he's picked himself up and did this. Truly magnificent. If there is the opposite of an air shot, that's it. <laughs> what a goal! That was a throwback to those early, very few Benfica months. He announced himself in European football in Portugal. You set him up for that? I, I'm afraid I did. You I, can have the assist. The old Villa fans are not too happy with me for that. But I did a couple of those games, and um, you, uh, you wouldn't forget the sort of goals that he scored. You always look carefully at conversations between Argentines and Brazilians. There's not a lot of common ground. It's certainly not the language. <laughs> Chelsea just need to make sure everything keeps coming. And if Villa are going to lose the plot, let them do it. They've brought in anything. It is an emotional game, and it's very easy to sit in judgment and he's out on the field giving their all heart as well as head it's 
So Villa needs something and fast. Cash over the ball. In by McGinn. It's good marking by Badishil on Diego Carlos. Enough to uh, make sure the header was off target. And this is a chance, isn't it? I think he knows it as well. It comes from a good position. He gets there first. Should have done a bit better. Well, well. Three days is a long time in football. I mean, you think that Chelsea were so poor at home to Wolves. They've conceded four in their last two games. They're looking to make sure they score four here. That's uh, a corner. And Reke again posing the problems. Oh, just keep coming. They don't concede again. By Moreno. And foul. And it's already the officials. Already a mountain to climb, isn't it, for Aston Villa to get themselves back into this? Sometimes you can watch games, so if they keep doing that, they'll get some chances. But there's not much we've seen in this hour. Matt to suggest, well, that's a, a way back into it. They've got to find what they haven't shown at all tonight, which is the excellent home form that beat the likes of Manchester City and Arsenal here in the Premier League and rolled over plenty of others as well. I remember the last team to stop them scoring at Villa Park was Chelsea. Good work again. Gusto been impressive tonight, attacking him when he's been called upon to defend. He's been obdurate. And it's been a real team effort. They've backed each other up. He'd be delighted, he doesn't look it, but he will be inside, he'd be beaming. This is the sort of performance he would have envisaged when he had the group of players that he's got, the quality that he's got in that dressing room. They need to show it on a consistent basis. And they've already reached one cup final, haven't they? Yeah, they have. And if they play like this, then uh, Liverpool, and of course, uh, favourites in terms of current form and in terms of uh, the recent history and finals between the two clubs. But this is a Pochettino Spurs performance, isn't it? When the heyday, when they were challenging for the title. Showing they are not just young, they are gifted. Uh, look for potential. Coming into the game, that potential seemed a long way away from being fulfilled, and it seems to go overboard on one good hour of performance. But this is a big game and a big competition. A difficult game, made difficult because they couldn't make home advantage count against the team that have been pretty rock solid in this stadium and they're just rolling them over. They've been superb, honestly. I mean, I, the attacking play's been excellent, but they've been controlled with it as well. Even there, that passion to play, they just played from the back, through midfield, in behind, and they've now got good possession in the opposition half. for them to get into situations and they can uh, a little bit of a glow of optimism just to don't play again till next Monday when they're away at Crystal Palace then they go to Manchester City that will be a 
It was just well after a four-all draw at Stamford Bridge not long ago. And then the cup final. Yeah. And then it seems a fifth-round tie at home to Leeds United. But this is the FA Cup. Luis again just don't know exactly what he was doing still good for a head injury to come along there and this is the goals Conor Gallagher got them off and running Really coolly taken finish. Nicholas Jackson with the second. Calmly planting his header into the bottom corner. And then this, truly world class. Not a keeper in the world would have saved that. One day, Emmy Martinez might see the funny side of it, but I'll say that day is a long way off. Here's Watkins. He's a creator of goals as well as a scorer of them. Bailey. Again. Finding a way through. Not finding a shot to uh, bring Villa a little glimmer of hope. He wants a foul. He gets his shot away. And I think he's then fouled in attempting the effort on goal. There. I mean, that's a, that's a foul, isn't it, from Kai Sado? Could have been across the line. It would have been VAR checked and it would have been a penalty. But of course, they can't check things outside the area via the protocol. And I wonder how long it is before you know, he only turns to his bench. I mean, you look at the bench, it's not got massive depth, but you know, Diaby, Zaniolo, Jacob Ramsey, he has got people who can change it. Diaby played in the first game, didn't he? Uh, Bailey only came on for the last few seconds. Jacob Ramsey's missed quite a lot of football. He's been, uh, regularly used as a substitute, though. In recent games, here's McGinn. Hugo Carlos. Matthew Cash, who plays with a lot of optimism. Villa need. They haven't built up a head of steam at all, though, have they, Aston Villa? They haven't been able to keep the ball long enough to do so. Alex Moreno. Douglas Luis. Good positioning by Chilwell. Yeah, just one word. There's a lot of good compliments you pay to Chelsea, but energy. I think all the rest has stemmed from the application of the energy. Of course they're fit. Of course they're young. You have to believe you'll get rewards from running around, and they haven't perhaps had the rewards they felt they deserved. And on the receiving end of a lot of criticism, but it's Aston Villa on the receiving end of this Chelsea performance tonight. Gallagher, Palmer. Sort of shot you might take if it's nil-nil, but when you're three nil up, keep the ball. And we started with Douglas Louise giving the ball away again in midfield. Here's McGinn. Strength from Gusto. Made it look easy winning the ball back, but it's not easy, it's a collective effort. And again, it requires that belief in fitness, helping each other. And the way Mauricio Pochettino was at his press conference yesterday, the way he talked about how he had talked to the players, there was a lot of cynicism in that room of, uh, of the press conference that, oh, Chelsea are this and Chelsea are that. He came up with some um, 
words that the players would have longed to have heard as well. He, uh, he believes in them, and they've responded to that belief. He also said, football is my passion, not a job. You can have your passion when your team plays like this. <laughs> Winning is, is is the drug, really, but to win with a performance as well, those don't come along too often and need to be celebrated. I, I remember him winning at Old Trafford 3 0 with Tottenham, and he wasn't over fussed about that because the performance wasn't there. Well, it is in this 3 0. Middle again, so positive. Every time he's picked up the ball or he's even without the ball, he's made those runs in behind. He's looked to hurt the opposition and so direct. Okay, so he just held Villa up a bit, but uh, only momentarily. Here's Bailey, wants to get it onto his left foot. Done by Tielemans. Bailey. Camera. That's Luis. Lost some belief, haven't they? Yeah, Aston yeah. Villa. It was good shape again from Chelsea, and every time the ball went back, one of the Chelsea players sprang out. First Gallagher, then De Sassi. Um, going to be changes for Unai Emery. Cash. That's it back again. What a block from De Sassi. He <laughs> was punching the air and. Chest bumps from his uh, teammates. Yeah, McGinn, it's an excellent run. The Sassy stays big. And well, that's as good a chance as they've uh, carved out, really. And it was also typical of the way Chelsea played all round, not the attacking play which we've uh, lauded and fated, but that kind of body on the line defending is all part of the mix. Going to be successful. Is he nudged when he probably was? Lost his grip. So Jacob Ramsey. We have mentioned Musa Diaby. We have mentioned we're going to see them. Timmermans is off. Maybe no FA Cup glory for him. His winner, of course, at Wembley was against Chelsea. Leicester. In departs. Tielemans also go off. So, uh, Bailey stays on. They've done an interchange with Diaby, but they need all the goal power they can muster in this last 20 minutes. Thank you. McGinn's got eight of his own this season. Mm. Okay. Pressing camera. Light for light changes, no changing system. Yeah, be up along. Watkins where Tielemans was playing and Ramsey on the left where McGinn was playing. Watkins who loves making those runs but it's had very good passes that have made the most of them. There he is. Still. And he used to be a winger and he's not shy of dribbling. Have to be careful there, Chelsea. Mm -hmm. Making a challenge inside the box. Ramsey. Was able to turn then, give it back to Moreno. Douglas Luis. And to the feet of Watkins. No foul. Watkins protestations. Oh, great to chase by Ollie Watkins. Yeah. Lux in that flies into the back of the net. 
this is their best period. I think that is certainly their most sustained period of possession. It wasn't a great ball back to him from Gusto. And he's making that point as well. There's Moreno. It's the sort of little thing that can encourage a team. Ramsey goes back to Moreno again. Miss hit by Diaby. Yeah, the Sassi going to ground. Had to make sure he got plenty of the ball. He did. Badishil then winning the header. Shina. They played well at the back, haven't they, Chelsea? It's time for an FA Cup winner. He's only scored two goals in the final. In 2019 for Manchester City against Watford. Anyway, K has certainly done the job tonight. The seniority being introduced by Mauricio Pochettino. And try and make sure the line is crossed successfully, the finishing line. This fourth round replay. <laughs> you did mention quite rightly, Matt, that that was a, a, a bit of sustained pressure from Villa, but not to the point where you think, hang on a minute, Chelsea are looking a bit vulnerable now. No, they're not creaking, are they? Defended really well, defended in numbers, defended with spirit. Everybody back. Cash. Bailey. Diaby. Cash. Moreno. Goalkeeper was worried. That did look as though Chelsea might be unhinged. Yeah, it did. Is it full back to full back? Cash to Moreno. And he beats Gusto in the air. He's coming onto it, sees it a long way out. Tries to guide it into that far corner, gets too much on it. Big chance that. Yeah. Hot with goalkeepers. Who do, let's be honest. Oh, encouraged by their coaches, shall we say, to, um, to waste time, run down the clock. It, uh, it's a silly thing to do now because it's, there's a campaign against it from the officials. So I'm sure there'll be other ways found. Chelsea have uh, found it hard to get the ball in the last few minutes. The nearest we've seen to Aston Villa getting up ahead of steam here. Moreno. Douglas Lewis. Slide it through. Cash. This is Bailey. This is Diaby in behind Chelsea. That hasn't happened too often. On the scene, Douglas Luis, and Jacob Ramsey. Oh, he went for the pass from the shot towards that far corner. He sees the spot from up here, but maybe he didn't see it. At pitch level has a real shooting opportunity. Oh, Jackson. By Palmer. This time does have a crack. They put so much effort into it, and we've stressed how young they are, but they're beginning to feel the pace of it now. Yeah, they are. I say they're down in the middle of the pitch. Yeah, the referee thinking that that's another attempt to run down the clock. He's not having. Renzo Fernandez is not happy that Matty Cash didn't kick the ball. He doesn't have to. It is time for Thiago Silva. 
Yeah, surely that does mean three at the back. Yeah, you would think so. I've got to say, though, that two centre-backs tonight, De Sassi and Badia Shield have been excellent. Every time the ball's gone wide, it's come into the box. They've been there to win the first ball. They've made numerous blocks. In the absence of Thiago Silva, they excelled. Just trying to work out. They bring Thiago Silva on for Casado if he needs to go off. Cole Palmer, we believe, was the player who did look tired, I must say. He, he had that shot as a last resort a couple of moments ago rather than trying to do anything intricate with the ball at his feet. Doesn't look great, does it, for Moises Caicedo? And at, at this stage, it's not worth taking any risks whatsoever. Feel actually looking at the two sets of substitutes, the Chelsea got the stronger bench. And Jackson called into the tactical discussion. Bonnie Shields already there, but on the pretext of rehydrating. And Christopher and Cuckoo signs that he might be joining the fray. Yeah, time for fresh legs. Chilwell as the captain. Feels he should be in on the uh, well, at least the fruits of the discussion. Just making sure that Kaiseido is okay to continue before deciding on the subs. Yeah. It was a little bit more nervy than often is the case when this kind of situation occurs, but you can understand that. This is a, a group that have come here with many people thinking a big defeat tonight. On the lines of the four goals conceded at Anfield, the four at home to Wolves, and the, there might be some changes made amongst the uh, managerial staff. So they want to get it right. Yeah, they do. Make sure they don't mess up the last ten minutes or so. Take his time, Cole Palmer. He stood right at the far side of the pitch. Well, you're supposed to go off on the far side of the pitch, but that's always in force here is Thiago Silva 39 years old and um, left out tonight he does sit in between De Sassi and Badi Ashil Kaiseido has gone off as not he for Kunku it's a sporting touch from Villa in the circumstances to give the ball back despite Matty Cash's Involvement. So, ten minutes, well, give or take three or four more, probably, away from a, a brilliant night for Chelsea. Chilwell. Enzo Fernandez. It seems sealed the deal. With that wondrous free kick. Sterling. Nothing uh, long term wrong with uh, Moises Caicedo. He's still out there. Mm, it looked like he was coming off, didn't it? But he's still on. Seem to be moving okay sometimes. Players are just, especially young players who've never really had many injuries. Uh, stumble from Lucas Jackson. There have been very few stumbles from Chelsea tonight in any sense. So they're still moving pretty well. And Chelsea moving relatively serenely now towards round five of the FA Cup. When they're saying we're going to Wembley, they're Half meaning this competition, of course, that they a traditional song for any team that's winning in an FA Cup tie, but uh, they are going to Wembley in less than three weeks' time. Subdued atmosphere now, isn't it? 
seconds, though Chelsea got the job done. I feel like they weathered that little storm from Aston Villa. It was a passing shower, really, wasn't it? Not yeah. much more than that. They have struggled at home. They, they were held by the bottom club, Sheffield United, which brought to an end a run of uh, a long run of consecutive wins. They beat Burnley, another struggler, only through a very late penalty. As uh, we've mentioned a few times, lost to Newcastle. Chelsea, of course, closing in on bookending this uh, run of Villa scoring at home, the last team to stop them doing it. And all close to being the latest team to do that. 38 games in between. Douglas Lewis. on the run. I'm not sure there was any avenue for that pass rather than just put it into the middle, but when the ball's gone into the middle, Chelsea defended so well. I understand Villa trying to find a different route. I think Carlos with the header. Hopkins did well to get there first. To Bailey. Bailey Shield. Strong left side. Volleys away. Plenty of Chelsea bodies. Behind the ball now, back five, midfield four, just one up top. Trying to see the game through. Just checking. And like I said, they're going to make a, another change anyway, it seems. Use up a bit more time. Christopher and Cuckoo getting ready actually. Uh, now there's a, a tweak perhaps for Badia Shield. Maybe that volley away on his good left foot. Tweak to Groin. So, uh, Christopher and Cuckoo acquainting himself with the FA Cup. And Alfie Gilchrist, of course, played in the first game at very short notice. Colwell was injured in the warm-up and helped keep a clean sheet and added to his flourishing reputation as one, the next one through the ranks, really. And that's the stamp of approval of John Terry, which would do for most young defenders. And Shield just find that the joy of victory is slightly dampened by that could uh, keep him out. Won't play till Monday again, as I remind you, so nothing too serious. It's been one of his best nights in a Chelsea shirt. Yeah, he got away with that one early on, didn't he, when Neil Bailey had the shot, when he seemed to struggle to kick the ball with his right foot. Jackson off as well. Kuku, who's hardly been seen, and Chelsea would be wondering had he been available right from the start, not had his injury problems, they would be in better shape. And there's a, a late change here, Tim Goodell-Boonham. And also, Saniolo, the camera departing. Pay structure when you needed to get onto the pitch to get your bonus appearance money. Yeah, those days have long gone. It's, it's a, an era when late substitutes were more motivated by keeping everyone within the group than trying to achieve a result. I do feel, without uh, disrespecting Aston Villa, that. Chelsea deserve the extra accolade of stopping Aston Villa scoring. Yeah, it's been a, an excellent performance all round, and it? Rome wasn't built in a day. There's still plenty for Chelsea to do, but this is a, 
a big step in the right direction. It's been an excellent performance from them. Talk about Jose Mourinho when you mentioned Rome. Yeah. But, uh, his name is always linked when there's a particular so called managerial strife. There's none of that. And you mentioned John Terry, and he's been mentioned as well, hasn't he, in dispatches yeah. about the return to the coaching staff. He's a former member of the Villa coaching staff as well. Well, who would have thought this? Team conceded eight goals in the last two games on the verge of a clean sheet against a side that always scores at home. And the team that uh, knocked in five on Saturday. Going to uh, discomfort, really. A side that's been very uh, weak in defence. Mirabunum. Now yeah, long late. Comes out of Gusto. I haven't been able to fashion too many chances, Aston Villa. It's a really good shape, defensive shape now for Chelsea. But Petrovic hasn't had too many saves to make. And they've got Moreno and Cash further up the pitch in the second half, but not to any avail. Ramsey in the short corner. And, and they can and take two. This particular set play. Mm -hmm. Cash has a crack. It's back to corner taker Douglas Lewis. Reverses it for Ramsey. Oh, and it has, they have scored. Diaby. It crept in, really. So Chelsea don't get their clean sheet. But nothing's going to stop them getting a place in the fifth round. And this is a miracle. Yeah, cool finish from Diaby. Well worked from Aston Villa. Rounds his cut back, and he arrives on the edge of the box and just guides it into that bottom corner. In off the post. An excellent finish. Gives them a glimmer of hope, although time is not on their side. Good finish. Yeah, it went through a lot of players, didn't it? I think uh, Petrovic got a reasonable view of it, but it's right in off the post. Gusto. Sterling. modern way is not to take the ball into the corner it's to bang it into the opposition's net and defending a lead a, a haymaker of a challenge from Caicedo that would have annoyed him a little bit but a reminder as you say Rome wasn't built in a day but, uh, matches can change I think it's fortunate for Chelsea that the goal has come so late. But, uh, there might be another one here with a challenge by Chilwell on the score of Diaby. Cash to drive it back. Anyway, by Thiago Silva. It's trying to uh, reinforce the sense of organisation here. They have got tired, Chelsea. They've put so much into the, getting into the winning position. Yep, be in trouble again. Back by Moreno. And uh, Bunham, I think it was with the header. Yeah, it would have made it very interesting if he scored a second. Good leap. For a moment, it just evaded Petrovic's grasp. He was able to cling on at the second attempt. A great take by Nkuku. And class written all over it. And he might go to the corner. No. And 
Hernandez. Chilwell. Gallagher. Here's Mkuku. That's a good save by Martinez. Otherwise, the team that's been conceding for would have scored for. Now it is corner time. And back to Caicedo. And nearly got a goal. But Matt, sum it up for us. Well, it's been a, a terrific performance from Chelsea and a deserved victory came into the game under immense pressure a young team that seemed affected by the negative results of late this put the seal on it a fabulous goal from Enzo Fernandes into the top corner that no keeper in the world would stop but Chelsea very impressive and Chelsea are into the fifth round of the FA Cup that was uh, the defining moment really the game will be remembered for but Chelsea's energy in the first 20, 25 minutes. Got them a two-goal lead through Gallagher and Jackson.